In this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know about adding moving platforms to your Unreal Engine project. This tutorial will include three different types of moving platform. First, we'll look at creating a platform that moves continuously between two locations. Then we'll move on to creating a platform that begins moving when the player stands on it. Finally, as a bonus, we'll add a system where the player can call the platform by interacting with a button. To start on our basic moving platform, go to the content browser, right click, go to blueprint class and select actor. Call this BP underscore moving platform. Open it, then click the Add button and search for a static mesh. Call this Platform. Then in the Details panel, go to the Static Mesh drop-down and select the asset you want to use for the platform. For this tutorial, I'm just going to use a basic cube and resize it into a platform shape. Now that the mesh is set up, you can go to the Event Graph and delete these events. Drag off the begin play and add a timeline. The timeline is a powerful node that will allow us to smoothly move the platform between two locations. Name the timeline something like TL underscore moving platform. To open the timeline, double click on it. Here we want to click add track and then add float track. Name this movement alpha. I'm going to set the length to something a little higher like 10 seconds. This will be the time for the platform's full cycle of moving to the second location and then back to where it started. Next we need to make sure that this loop button is enabled. This is so the platform moves repeatedly between the two locations. Next hold shift and left click on the graph to add a point. This will be used for the start position of our platform so set the time to zero and also set the value to zero. Next hold shift and left click again to add another point. This will be for the second position of our platform. Set the time of this point to half the total length of the timeline. Our total length is 10, so we will set this to 5. Then set the value to 1. The values of 0 and 1 will allow us to interpolate the platform between two different locations in the level. Finally, shift and left click on the graph again to add a final point. This will be for returning back to the start position. Set it to the full time of 10 seconds, then set the value to 0. Next, go back to the event graph. Right click and add a lerp for vector. The A and B vectors are used for the start and end location of the platform. Connect the alpha to the moving alpha pin on the timeline. The alpha is used to smoothly move the platform between the A and B location. Because we're going to set the platform's location relatively, we can leave the A values all as zero. For the B vector, right click on it and promote it to a variable. Name this end location. Click on the eye to make the variable public. The reason we want to do this is so that if we have multiple of these platforms in our level, we can independently change the end location for each one. Next, drag in the platform static mesh. Then drag off it and search for set relative location. Connect this to the update pin on the timeline. Then connect the lerp return value to the new location pin. The platform's now set up to move smoothly between the start and end location, so let's test it. Compile and save then go back to the viewport. Then go to the content browser and drag in our platform. Because we made the end location variable public, if you have the platform selected, in the details panel you can set an end location. For now I'm just going to keep it simple and set the Y value to 1000. If you press play you'll see that you now have a basic platform that moves continuously between two locations. Because we use a vector for the end location variable, we can make the platform move across multiple axes. So if we have it selected we could set the Z value to something like 500 and now it will move up and down as well as left to right. Just changing the Z value would be useful for something like adding an elevator to your game. At the moment our platform isn't very smooth, as when it reaches one of the endpoints it suddenly reverses direction. I'll quickly show you how to make the movement smoother so that it slows down at each end. Go back to the moving platform blueprint and open the timeline, then drag to select all the points on the graph. Right click on one of the points and select auto. This will smooth out the graph making the platform slow down as it changes direction. Next we're going to create a platform that starts moving once the player jumps on it and stops moving once the player jumps off. To do this, open the content browser, right click on our platform and duplicate it. 
Call this BP underscore triggerable platform. Open it, then go to the viewport. Select the platform mesh, click the add button and search for a box collision. This will be used to detect when the player jumps on the platform. Move and resize this so that it fills up the whole area above the platform. Next, go back to the event graph and delete the begin play. Right click on the box collision, go to add event, then add on component begin overlap. This will trigger when the player first begins to overlap the collision box. Connect this to play so that the movement starts when the collision occurs. Next, right click on the box collision again, go to add event, then add on component end overlap. This will trigger when the player exits the collision box. Connect this to stop so that the platform ceases its movement. This is all we need to do for this platform to work, so compile and save then go back to the viewport. Go to the content browser and drag in our new platform. With it selected, set the end location of the platform. Now if you press play and jump on the platform, it will start moving. And when you jump off, it will stop moving. Finally, we're going to create a platform that can be triggered using a button. To do this, we first need to quickly set up some interaction functionality for our character. Go to the content browser, then locate your input actions folder. Right click, then go to input, then input action. Call this IA underscore interact. This input's value type should be set to digital bool. Save and close this, then locate your input mapping context. Open it, then click the Add button. Go to the drop down and select our new input action. Click the keyboard button, then select the key on your keyboard that you would like to use. Then we can just save and close this. Next, go back to the content browser and locate your character blueprint. Open it, then in some space, right click and add the interact input action. Expand this, then drag off the started pin and search for a multi sphere trace. This will be used to create a sphere around the player when the interact input is pressed. This sphere will be able to detect whether something can be interacted with. Next, right click and search for a get actor location. Connect this to the start and end pins so that the sphere spawns around the player. Next, set the radius to something like 200. Then drag off the object types and search for a make array. We want to be able to detect the button we're going to make. So click the add pin, then go to the drop down and select world dynamic. To test it's working, set the draw debug type to for duration. For now, we're just going to compile and save this and come back to it later. Next, we need to make a blueprint interface so that we can interact with the button we're going to make. So right click in the content browser, go to blueprint, then blueprint interface. Call this BPI underscore interaction. Open it, then call the function interact. That's all we need to do for this, so compile and save and then close it. Next we're going to make the platform, so right click on the moving platform blueprint and duplicate it. Name this BP underscore button platform. Open it, then delete the event begin play. Right click and add a custom event. Call this trigger movement. This event will be triggered from the button, making the platform move. Connect it to play. Next we're going to make the button blueprint. So go back to the content browser, right click, go to blueprint class, then select actor. Call this BP underscore button. Open it, then click the add button. For the button I'm just going to use a sphere and I'll resize it just to make it a bit smaller. Next, go to the event graph and delete these events. We want to add our interact blueprint interface to the button. So go to class settings, then under implemented interfaces, search for our interaction blueprint interface. Next, right click on the interact event and click implement event. This will be triggered when the player interacts with the button. Next, we need to make a variable which will store the platform that the button triggers. Name it platform, then set the type to our button platform blueprint. Make sure this is an object reference. 
Set the variable to public so that we can link the button and the platform in the level. Next, drag in the variable and get it. Drag off it and search for the trigger movement event from the platform blueprint. Connect this to the interact event. Compile and save, then go back to the player character blueprint, where we're going to set up the final parts of the interaction. Drag off this return value and search for a branch. Then drag off the out hits and search for a for each loop. This will go through all the objects that the sphere trace hits. Add some reroute nodes to keep it tidy. Drag off the array element and search for a break hit result. Then expand it. Drag off the hit actor and search for a does implement interface. Then go to the drop down and select our interaction blueprint interface. Drag off the return value and search for a branch. Then connect this to the for each loop. This system checks if the hit actor has our interface and therefore can be interacted with. Next, drag off the hit actor again and search for our blueprint interface interact event. Then finally connect this to the true pin. Compile and save then go back to the viewport. Go to the content browser and drag in our new platform. Then with it selected set the end location. Next go back to the content browser and drag in the button. In the details panel, find the platform variable, then click the eyedropper, then click on the platform in the level. Now this specific platform is linked to the button. Now when you go over to the button and press your interact key, the platform will start moving. Finally we just need to turn off the debug for the interaction. So go back to the player character and on the multi-sphere trace set the debug type to none. Then compile and save. You should now know three different ways of using platforms in Unreal Engine 5. If this video helped you, please feel free to like and subscribe or support me on Patreon so that I can keep making these Unreal Engine tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.